Hello, everyone. I'm Sankur Ranganath, a Global Solutions Architect at Intel. I'm happy to be here virtually to talk about lessons from enabling cloud native or Rick for the edge with my colleague Hasna Mustafa, who's loading the effort, along with Mike Rick here from Red Hat. To start off, we have approach Oran Rick enabling using a set of essential building blocks from our SmartEdge Open project. SmartEdge Open is a cloud native software framework we provide to enable you to build your customized edge solutions, leveraging Kubernetes while abstracting underlying hardware and network complexity for 5G. Some of the highlights with this framework is that it uses Kubernetes engine certified by CNCF and offers additional optimization for AI and media workloads helps you utilize hardware security capabilities, et cetera. SmartEdge Open provides these set of building blocks that enables you to optimize your solutions for edge, such as uh, high-performance data plane constructs, accelerators for AI and wireless networks, zero trust security, multi-access, green edge constructs, telemetry and monitoring, et cetera, which form the crucial components for enabling Orandric. An easy to consume model, for example, could also be for someone who wants to deploy private 5G, can utilize private wireless experience kit uh, from the catalog of experience kits and as is and scale from there. In terms of building blocks, the left side here uh, lists out different capabilities available through SmartEdge Open. Through cloud native microservices model and aligning with different 5G standards, Multitude of these capabilities are being explored for REC. In collaboration with Red Hat, we are looking at utilizing building blocks on the right to enhance the REC to operate under a certain SLA. Some of the aspects we are looking at are having hardware aware resource management with Kubernetes constructs, such as node feature discovery, topology management, core pinning, et cetera, which are really impactful for RAN workloads. Utilizing SROV and various CNIs, we are looking at fine tuning high performance data plane for RIC, utilizing open Vino based inferencing for RAN intelligence and XAPS, custom hardware telemetry to ensure real time SLAs within RIC, et cetera, are some of the items that we are enabling. An example of a reference solution demonstrating open source SD RAN near real time RIC with AI-based connection management XAP with inferencing latency less than 10 milliseconds is available for you to download via Intel developer catalog. With that, I'll pass it on to Mike to share further details on RIC enabling. Thank you, Sunku, and thank you, Hasna from Intel. Hi, everyone. My name is Michael Rekia from Red Hat. I am a global telco solutions architect. And today I would like to talk about application of the Intel building blocks. We'd like to talk about applying the building, building blocks in three areas. Building blocks are applied to uh, OCP proper, that is the OpenShift container platform itself. The building blocks are applied to a ORAN component or an ORAN platform, namely the RAN intelligent controller and in particular, the software modules that are major components of the RIC. And then we'd like to talk about the RIC use cases and how the building blocks can be used to optimize the use cases themselves or the end-to-end -end cellular use case. And so the output, of course, of all this are optimized OCP, optimized RIC, and optimized use cases in general. Again, looking at the different categories for the study, the first one being OCP or OpenShift Container Platform proper, we'll be looking at how can the building blocks be applied to the native internal capabilities of OCP? Um, what are the things that are important from a performance pr perspective, a resource consumption perspective, and the networking perspective? Uh, and so those things that are part of OCP, sort of the native components of OCP will be looked at and the building blocks would be applied where they can be applied. The near run real-time RIC itself um, is composed of many software modules. Um, we'll look at the architecture of the RIC in a moment, 
but there are some very important software modules, uh, in particular in support of XApps, the E2 interface itself is a very critical interface. So can we apply the building blocks to the E2 client, for example, on the OCU and DU? Um, can we apply the building blocks to the RIC processes associated with E2, for example, the E2 termination and E2 manager and XAP E2 subscription manager? And of course, there are other RIC modules um, like the RMR, the RIC message router, the data bus, and so on. Then a, in, a, of particular interest is putting it all together in an end-to-end -end use case, uh, the use case proper, we call it. And mainly that would be, uh, what is the cellular use case of interest? We'll probably be looking at proactive maintenance type use cases where there's an anomaly detection in the RAN, followed by traffic steering to move the UEs away from the anomaly. Um, so we're going to look at that use case initially, and we're going to try to move, study a couple of areas. One is the network layer flow, for example, the packet flow, the packet loss, throughput and latency, and the other one being uh, the impact on objects uh, like the SDN controller, the RIC modules, the OCP modules, the network interfaces, and so on. Now, I mentioned the RIC a few times, and I mentioned the software modules involved, and you can see this is the sort of an architecture view of the near real-time RIC. And you can see several different modules. And so the idea here would be, can we apply the building blocks to these different modules to gain some sort of value or to optimize them in some way? So for example, can we use uh, the building blocks on the message bus um, as an example? And another thing we're looking at is potentially using Red Hat middleware as sort of replacement parts for some of these RIC components. For example, using AMQ interconnect as a component of the message bus. Again, starting out, uh, the use cases we're starting out with tend to be the uh, proactive maintenance telco use cases. Um, so that, that involves anomaly detection up front with traffic steering uh, to move away from the anomaly, for example, interference or congestion. Uh, we will be starting with an a ORAN SE provided uh, near real-time RIC and some X apps that are provided by the, by the SE near real-time RIC. Um, and then over time, we'll be looking at potentially using uh, some of our tech partner RICs uh, as part of the study. Um, and uh, some of the prerequisites for the testing include uh, a far edge footprint, for example, using an open edge, uh, Nokia open edge form factor, a five server form factor that can be deployed just about anywhere externally or internally. Um, and it's great for mobile applications. Um, if a far edge footprint is not available, we'll start with um, a general purpose machine like an HP or a Dell. Well, we intended to use the ORNSE e-release initially and OCP 4.10 and of course RHEL. And then uh, we're starting out in the lab with E2 SIM, eventually migrating to actual OCU DU with actual E2 clients on the OCU DU. Uh, so that's how we're starting out. So the lab initially looks like this. Uh, we have the Gina B emulation with keys E2 simulation on the left. Uh, we have in the middle uh, the representation of the edge data center, the orange block there. Uh, you can see OCP there uh, with the building blocks associated with OCP, the near real time RIC uh, running on OCP, and then the X apps that uh, are part of the use case uh, on top of all of that infrastructure. Um, and then to the right, we're just blowing it up a little bit. And then as we migrate over time, we're going to have an actual G Note B in the lab. Again, OCU, ODU with E2 clients that will support the use cases of interest for telcos. Um, and that's really the only change between the previous picture and this picture. Uh, again, the near-term record is in the middle running on OCP. 
we can see some of the more important modules there like the E2 Terminator, E2 Manager. And we can see the building blocks are distributed throughout the use case, including on the uh, E2 clients, on the near real-time RIC, on OCP, uh, and so on. One of the other things we're doing with uh, Intel is we're working on some um, standards uh, for certain functionality. For example, this one has to do with communicating service attributes from the network layer to the cloud layer uh, with application of the building blocks uh, to each of the layers um, of particular interest. Here is network slicing where we have multiple subnets and we want to apply the building blocks to each subnet and test this on uh, a particular idea, which is to be able to meet the SLA, the end-to-end -end SLA requirements uh, for each on each of the slicing slice subnets. So application of the building blocks to each of the network slice subnets and each of the components within the subnet. Uh, and the, those components we talked about earlier, like OCP and the RIC and so on. Another um, um, function that we're working on to, to standardize is this concept of mapping microservices on the user plane to particular X apps running on the ORAN RIC. The, and basically the idea here is that you want to optimize the RAN for the particular services that are running on the user plane. So if I've got edge services on the Mac, um, for example, gaming, visual, uh, virtual reality, rendering, uh, I want to make sure that the RAN is optimized for that particular capability. And so I communicate that from the MAC to the RIC uh, and, and, the, and the particular X apps associated with optimizing for that particular service are then invoked and then executed. And then you can, again, you can see the uh, intent here is to, to execute the same capability, but also apply the building blocks uh, as we're doing it. And that concludes my portion of the talk, so thank you very much.